That's better. No, no, you're not stupid. Okay, so we'll leave you with the boatman and the scum. Does anyone know who I am? No. No one? No. Don't you know who I am? No. My name is Professor Swatterlot Crangerton Carruthers. PhD, MAD, DOG, and I have very distinguished BO. I'm a very important man. I'll have you know, I've lectured in the most important universities in the world. Cambridge University, Oxford University, Liverpool University, and now I'm presently lecturing in the crest jewel of the British Empire, Calcutta University. Surely you've heard of me, I'm a very important scholar. Anyway, I want to cross this river, they call it the Ganges or the, the Ganges or something. I know this is a boat here, but where's that confounded boatman? I say, Fuzzy Wazzy, is this your boat? Oh. My name is not Fuzzy Wazzy. My name is Bajan Hari. I want to know if we can cross the river in this boat. Is it yours, actually? This is my boat, and before me, my father is having, and his father, and his father before him having, very good boat, Professor. Never mind all that, it's seaworthy. Oh, very good boat, only one or two holes. <laughs> okay then, we'll get it back. Do you, do you charge for the ride across this street? Mm, for a man like you, just a uh, little, not too much, a little price, only 20 paisa. 20 paisa? <laughs> not only am I very intelligent and vastly learned, I'm also very wealthy. I'm an aristocrat as well. No problem for me. Uh, in that case, maybe 50 rupees. <laughs> <laughs> in the temple, they are teaching us from the Bhagavad Gita about the science of self-realization, about the Atma transmigrating. The science of the Atma transmigrating? What are you talking about? We're talking about science. Galileo, Newton, Einstein, not some mumbo-jumbo, primitive, hodgepodge garbage. Science, man, real science. Good God, you primitive, uneducated Neanderthal. You've wasted 25% of your silly life. Now hurry, I'm not in the start yet. I'm in a hurry! Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Shut up, I said, shut up! I said, shut up. Don't you know anything about music? Oh, actually we are knowing quite a lot about music. Because when we are having the Bhajan evening and Kirtan at the temple, 
they are playing the drum and they are playing the harmonium and the cymbal they are playing Jaya Radha Madhava Kuja Vihari Gopega Navala Madhava Jungle drums Jungle drums We are talking about real music Baseball music Both sides Shots Bark Bark Oh, you insolent, uncultured retard. I never mind all this budge and hurry. Just budge and hurry up. You've wasted 50% of your life. Hurry up. We're not even halfway across yet. I say, look at that. Look, look. That's a prime example of a short toe, wide leg, long tail, yellow breasted, wide tail. I think. Hmm. Professor Jim, that uh, is a parrot. A green parrot we see every day. <laughs> yes, we see it every day. A green parrot, you know. A parrot. Don't you know anything about ornithology? Oh, no. The study of birds, you bird brain twit. You wasted 75% of your life. Now hurry up and get moving. I've not gone all day, I'm important. I'm sure you are. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. I say, do you know I've written a book? Have you seen this book before? This is called the Kramatin Corrado's Complete Compendium of Everything You Want to Know About Anything at All. I wrote it myself. It's very, very good, I said. Look at this. For example, see over there those clouds? There we are. Cumulo nimbus clouds, very rarely seen, only just prior to a very severe tropical storm. Good God. And it's getting rather windy. Oh, it's, it's starting to rain, it must be a storm. Oh my word. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm glad my brother gave me the right umbrella. I thought you said this boat was seaworthy, it's leaking. It's leaking. This boat's not even going to get across the river. Oh, Professor Dean, I think we are going to have to swim. Swim? That's okay, but I can't swim. What am I going to do? Oh, you can't swim? Well, there's nothing else for it. You'll have to take shelter of the Holy Name. The Holy Name? I don't know anything about the Holy Name. What's that? Oh, you don't know anything about the Holy Name? Then you have wasted a hundred percent of your whole life. It's <laughs> very really obvious, perhaps to some, this uh, professor was a very intelligent man. Materially, he was very learned. There was about actually nothing he didn't know. He knew everything about the material, absolutely everything. And actually it was all useless at the time of death. Because for all his vast learning and knowledge, at the time of death, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to think of. What was coming next? Oh dear, I've wasted another life. So this is actually how serious human life is. In an animal species, we just eat, drink, fight, sleep, basically an animal life. But the human form of life is very important. Actually the human form of life is meant for cultivating spiritual knowledge, or specifically knowledge of Krishna consciousness. In very ancient scriptures it's stated that actually the perfection of human life is to be able to remember Krishna at the time of death. Because in Bhagavad Gita, which is not primitive mumbo jumbo hodge podge waffle, if that's what he called it, 
But actually, Bhagavad Gita is a very important scripture. Spoken by Krishna himself, the personality of Godhead. And he explains in the Bhagavad Gita that whatever we think of at the time of death, that will take us to our next body. This is the transmigration of the soul. Our consciousness determines our next birth. And our consciousness at the time of death is actually determined by our activities we perform during life. Whatever we've done, whatever desires we've cultivated, whatever we're attached to, whatever we've done during life, that will be our focus of consciousness at the time of death. And then at that point of death, whatever we're absorbed in, that will take us to our next birth. So, for some who are absorbed in simply animalistic activities, then they'll take birth as an animal. If someone is pursuing a path of spiritual knowledge, then they will get a human form of life so that they can continue their studies, they can continue their progress to the point where, at some point in this life, we'll be able to remember Krishna at the end of this life. And then Krishna promises, we'll go back to him. So this material world, it's uh, a place of birth, death, disease, and old age. Old age and disease, we know, at least some of us, it's very uncomfortable, it's a problem, it's painful. Death is frightening. Sometimes people are very bold, they say, oh, I'm not afraid of death, but you steal their favorite CD, or you steal their favorite pen, or you steal their girlfriend or their boyfriend, then they become very upset, very angry, because they're attached. This is my favorite pen. Someone's stolen my pen. How could they do that? And it causes such a disturbance. So what to speak of when their car, their house, their family, their friends, their job, their country, their body is all taken away and there's no choice. That's very frightening. If we're attached to a pen or we're attached to our hairstyle, we're definitely attached to our body. And the time of death, we kicked out. No choice. Death comes, finished. Our next destination is determined as we explain, by what we're thinking about at the time of death. So the human form of life is actually meant for cultivating knowledge of Krishna, practicing being absorbed in Krishna. In Krishna consciousness, one learns to tolerate all the ups and downs of life. Sometimes we're happy, sometimes we're distressed, sometimes we want something, sometimes we don't want something, sometimes you want this kind of association, sometimes you want to avoid that kind of association, you want to be here or be somewhere else. But all things like this we learn to tolerate. And a devotee is one who tries to cultivate remembrance of Krishna through all the ups and downs of life, not just the distressing circumstances, not just the pain and the hurt, but even the happiness that we may feel in this material world. We practice to remember Krishna. So at that point, of death, which is the most distressing time, then, by Krishna's grace, we'll be able to remember Krishna. And then, we don't have to take birth again in this material world. Some people think this material world is very nice, I'm happy, I'm comfortable. But what is the value of being comfortable for a few years, or 10 years, or 30 years, or 50 years? What's the value of being comfortable? And if our next life we take birth as a cockroach in our, in our garage, what's the point? Is a cockroach happy? I don't think so. Cockroaches, what? Something eats cockroaches. What would eat cockroaches? A frog? Maybe a toad? Something anyway, right? Because every living entity is food for another, so it's a fearful existence. And in this life we also experience fear as well. But if we utilize this human form of life properly, and we practice cultivating Krishna consciousness, specifically by chanting Krishna's holy names, this Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, then gradually, gradually, we become more and more attached to Krishna. Simply by chanting this Maha Mantra, we're able to remember Krishna through all the difficulties of life, and ultimately we can remember Krishna at the end of this life. And then we go back to the spiritual world to associate with Krishna, who, as Prabhupada explained before, is certainly 
the most attractive person. And who would not like to be the most attractive person? Everyone's attracted to beauty. That's why it's called beauty, because it's attractive. People are very attracted to wealth, or strength, or wisdom. All these things are attractive. Whatever we're attracted to in this material world, sometimes we're attracted to a nice car, because it looks nice, we like it, it goes fast, it's powerful. But Krishna is a reservoir of all these qualities. He's the most beautiful, he's the wisest, he's the strongest, the most powerful, the most influential. He's certainly the topmost in every facet of attractive features. So there's no doubt we're all attracted to Krishna. But when we're attracted to the beauty of this material world, which is just a fragmented, tiny, insignificant portion of the beauty of God, then by that attachment, then we have to take birth again and again and again and again. But if we become attracted to Krishna in person, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that's it. No more birth. An eternal life full of bliss and knowledge. Human knowledge. Knowledge of our spiritual nature. Knowledge of our eternal nature and full knowledge of Krishna. Not knowledge of ornithology, Mursa, and there's all this other stuff. So, hopefully, the little skip makes things a little clear. If we can remember sometimes how foolish the professor is, and then we can maybe allude uh, to our own example of life, how important, you know, we, we, how much importance we place on things in our life, and realize that actually, are we learning to think about Krishna? Are we trying to remember Krishna? Because that is the message of the ancient Vedic scriptures, that actually the perfection of life is simply to remember Krishna at the end of life. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Remember, if you know it, sing along, and if you don't, just hear, clap your hands, and then uh, when it comes to chant Hare Krishna, then you can join in. Okay? Oh, uh -huh.
the exercise. <laughs> now the room's a bit further north, so you might end up slapping somebody in the face. Maybe. Everybody after me. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! That's there. Okay, you can put your hands down. Don't want too, too much work on the Sunday, right? Okay, so I think the next item is another drama. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for the drama persons to be ready, we can experience tangibly that by chanting the holy names of God, we can become satisfied, very peaceful, begin to understand the actual uh, needs and necessities that we have in our daily life. Of course, we're all from different backgrounds and we're all from different walks of life. Some young, some old, some old, some married, some unmarried, some children. So there are many, many things that come our way in our daily lives. You know, school, education, work, uh, sometimes in leisure, so many different things. But Srila Prabhupada, who is our founding spiritual master, his pictures are right at the back there on the window. He introduced this Hare Krishna movement to the West in 1965. And Prabhupada's only request was that one please chant Hare Krishna. Find a little time in our day to just chant. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, two hours, depending on how much time that you have free. <coughs> Prabhupada also described that you don't really have to change your situation, you only have to change your consciousness. That is all that's being asked. We're trying to change our consciousness from being unconscious of our relationship with God to being conscious of our relationship. But not only just conscious of our relationship with God, we are actually becoming conscious that a God exists. So many wonderful things, people, they just uh, put to chance, right? You know, they say everything happened by chance. Or some chemical explosion, even. Now, tomorrow after this program, actually, I guess you didn't know this, but I'm opening my own factory in Liverpool. And I'm going to manufacture universes. Anybody like to buy a universe from me? Yeah. How much? Tell me how much. And then I might think about it. How much? That's too, too little. So in my new factory in Liverpool, I'm going to manufacture universes. Anybody believe me? How dare you say me? <laughs> Of course I can. Not in the factory. Not in the factory, no. Okay, uh, two factories. One can manufacture one part of the universe, and the other one can manufacture the other. Good try. I'd be wasting money though, wouldn't it? And time. And that, that person there, they wouldn't be the only one in the little van. It would be me as well. Because everybody <laughs> thinking, this guy's cooker, he's trying to manufacture uni uh, universes in Liverpool. Wrong place to manufacture universes. Right? At least you should pick Glasgow or Edinburgh or something. Okay. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> we agree. It's much nicer than Glasgow. We snowed there this morning. Although it wasn't much better here. But the concept is that if I claim to be able to manufacture the universe, everybody will consider me local, right? Puggle. All right? Loco is Spanish, isn't it? For, uh, in Scotland they have wonderful terms like do lally, round the twist, bonkers, you know, so many other things, right? But the scientists, they come to the television, they come to your cinema, they come to your homes, they come to your school and your university and everywhere and say, there's no God, we can manufacture a universe, we know where life came from, we know that we were monkeys. Said, yeah, you might have been, but I haven't. <laughs> And the good news for them is, if they're not careful, they definitely will be. <laughs> but who's standing saying, the scientist is loco or puggo? Nobody. Because 
society in general prefers to believe them because if society is godless then we don't have to follow anybody we don't have to do what we're told there are no rules there are no laws there's no regulation there's no meaning i can do what i like i'm free unfortunately not the case after i've created my universe the next thing i'm going to remove is the force of gravity here we are sitting in this beautiful temple in front of these beautiful deities all stuck to the floor. Can anybody see gravity? Anybody got the gravity specs on? <laughs> if you have, you can run them for me for 20 minutes. But it's working. Otherwise, if we remove the gravity from this room, we start joking. Well, that's a different kind of gravity. Right? Then everyone goes up there to the roof. This is a natural law which is in being because someone put it into being and it wasn't me and it wasn't you any gravity mongers in the room <laughs> it's a natural law it's god's law the same as all these other things we've described at this point everything is happening by god's arrangement so krishna consciousness means that we become conscious of our relationship with that personality who is known as Param Ishwar, or the Supreme Controller. This next little drama which is ready called Sanatana Goswami and the Touchstone will help us understand that a little bit more. Okay? Just a week ago! My wife! Can anyone hear me? Yes. I won! So I'm here with the hose! It's still laughing! She said to me, Sit this to she, when you marry me, you promise me the world. And all the time I've been married to you, I've been one single earring. Don't you show your pretty face here again until you bring me the most beautiful, valuable thing in the world. And then all the villains gather up. They don't come on, he says, Sinesh, what happened to you? I said, no, what? Go in the other house. And they will laugh. Is that you? Well, that's good. And they said, Shares, we know where you can find the most powerful thing in the world. Go to Brindavan, the holy, holy land of branch. And there, try to find a great soul called Sanatan Goswami. He can give you the most valuable thing in the world. So I'm walking for a week. In this jungle, but there's no Vrindavan, no Sanatan, just many jungle. <laughs> oh. The atmosphere seems different here. Could this be Pratch? Could Sanatan go swimming in there? Oh, Sanatan! <coughs> Sanatan! Even the microphone isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Sanatan Goswami! Sanat Joshi. Yes, that's me. You have come in search of the most valuable thing in the world. I have. On the request of your wife. I have it. Do you have it? Yes, Sanat. You got it. Sanat, the most valuable thing in the world. Is yes. It's very near. Very near. Have you got it on? Sanaj, I always keep the most valuable thing in the world a very near, Sanaj. How near is near? Very near? 
slash Smith. You can find them on Spider-Man in the world, over there, slash, in the dustbin. Ah! In the dustbin, slash. In the dustbin! It so will immediately turn into gold. Go! Go! Go to the microphone, sir! mere gold will bring him eternal happiness. If he had only listened to the words of our sweet Lord Bhagwan Sri Vishnu, when he said that taking pleasure in the material senses, this has both the beginning and end. A wise person does not lack delight in the pleasures of the senses. He knows that such pleasures have both the beginning and the end. Jamuna. What? 
into the river Jamuna. But I'll never get it back if I do that. If you want the most valuable thing in the world, it's up to you. If you want to keep the touch John, you can keep the touch John. If you want the most valuable thing in the world, Salesh, you must throw it away into the river Jamuna. But if I do that, that whole week in this many jungle. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's up to you, Salesh. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, right. Oh, right. Of course, this way. Oh, it's full of Hindus. It's full of dead Hindus. Okay, I'll do it. Grasping hands, but we need only an attentive ear and an open heart. <laughs> the sweet holy name of Krishna descends from the transcendental realm of Goloka Vrindavan Dham, and being non different from him, is invested with all of his wonderful potencies. When that sweet name enters your ear, You'll desire thousands of ears with which to hear that sweet name. But when the name dances on your tongue, you'll want millions of tongues with which to taste that sweetness. Then the holy name will conquer your mind and senses and dance in the courtyard of your heart. Now, my child, chant after me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Now, take these beads. Go home to your wife. And tell her that you now do indeed have the most valuable thing in all the worlds. Keep this greatest of treasures with you at all times. And wherever you go, whoever you meet, make them also the most fortunate. Discriminatory intelligence 
by which we're supposed to be able to discriminate between what should be done and what should not be done. This is the difference. Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. These are propensities that all species have, all animal species, and the humans also. But that which sets aside the human from the animal is that he or she is supposed to understand how to regulate these needs and ultimately how to call up British Telecom <laughs> and say you're sent to my big bill. No problem. I, I switched my mouth. I'm guilty of it too. One time we were sitting in a very important meeting in Paris and my phone went off, you know, and I got told off, so since then I don't remember. Switch your phone off. <laughs> Where were we? British Telecom. Well, I've started universes, I've joined BT. But that God-given gift of intelligence or that ability to discriminate between what should be done and what should not be done is basically what this life is about. You know, a lot of the time we turn on the TV or open a newspaper or magazine or whatever and we see so many things. So many people striving for what they might call pleasure. And that is a natural thing because Krishna explains to us that the soul, the jiva, the atma by nature has inherent qualities. It is sat, which means it's eternal. Chit, which means full of knowledge or understanding. And anand. Anand means full of pleasure. So our Natural instincts are to push us towards these things. One, to become eternal. Two, to, 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 two, to accumulate knowledge. And three, to be happy. These are natural things that we feel. And we feel these things because that is our natural, God-given identity. We are Satchit Ananda. And then the important part is actually figure out how we have a form, a full form. So at this point, we have to be very quick because we have to finish by 5.30. We've done this before, but we'll do it again, just for the sake of it. We're going to ask for a willing volunteer from the audience to come and join me up here for a small experiment. <coughs> you know, I remember I'm a mad scientist, so who's going to be bold enough to come and join me for a... Small experiment. Anybody? Come on then. Oh, I've got two. Two is not. One, one's fine. One's okay. Come on. Let's give them a round of applause for being back. So, at this point, Capillo, go to the car for the hammer and chisel. Come on. Yeah. What's your name? My name is Dilip Kumar. Dilip Kumar. We had you in a drama the other week. <laughs> in Karuna Bhavan. We had a Dilip in our drama. So Dilip Kumar, uh, this may be an embarrassing question, but how old are you? 26. Oh, uh, he's older than me. Of course, I'm not supposed to tell lies, but we do from time to time. Okay, Dilip Kumar, he's 26 years old. Who's the most handsome? <laughs> Don't tell lies. It's him. Okay. So we're going to ask him to help us in a very, very simple but kind of graphic experiment. So they point to your left leg. That's the one next to the right one. Point to your left leg. Go on. You need to hand on. That's his left leg. Does everybody agree this is Dilip's left leg? Yes. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's the his right one. His left one. Okay. Whose leg is that? Okay. Do we agree it says? Yes. yes. Okay. I'm going to speed this up. <laughs> Point to your chest. Okay. <laughs> Whose chest is it? Do we agree? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Point to your head. No, no, that's <laughs> too much of that going on today. Whose head is it? Is this Dilip Kumar's head? Yes! Okay, Dilip Kumar, point to you. That's your chest, Jimmy. 
different, right? You know, this is my chest here, but this is me. Let's sit down. Give him a round of applause. Everybody does that because they don't know who they actually are. They only can identify with their body. Now, if, unfortunately, I didn't come here for this part, but if you were to lose a limb, for instance, which some people unfortunately do, if you was to lose an arm, would it make Dilip Kumar any less valuable or less of a person? No? Why not? Because he's the same person. If you were to lose a leg, would it make him less of a person? No. Why? Because he's not his leg and he's not his arm. Otherwise, we walk around saying, I arm, right? When we say my arm, we don't say I arm, I am an arm, do we? Does anybody go around and say to their friends, hey, look, I am an arm? No. We even get to the point where we say, I have a body, it's my body, it's my mind, it's my chest, it's my arm, it's my leg, it's my intelligence. Maybe not today, but... We say that we own these things. Why? Because subconsciously even we start to understand that we are not this material body, but something totally different. And that is what this chanting of Hare Krishna will help to uncover. One's eternal Krishna conscious nature as the Atma, that which is different from the body. Like we gave that example earlier today of how Matter cannot produce life, right? So even if we get extremely gross about it and we put two dead bodies, one male, one female, in the room, are we going to have any babies? Why not? No, don't, don't explain that. Because life can only come from life. Krishna teaches us that we are the eternal Servants, Jeeves, for the Bhagavad Gita and it to us. We are the eternal servants of the Supreme Lord. That is our natural condition. So to spend a little time to cultivate one's Krishna consciousness or one's God consciousness is the ideal use of one's human form of life. It's the only form of life you can drive in. So please do not waste this valuable human form that you have, that I have. Utilize one life. There was one French philosopher, we, kept, we keep getting his name mixed up. Pascal, anyone know any Pascal? Sounds like paint to me. What did he say? He said, if you gamble that he is, and he isn't, like this is gambling on the existence of God, by the way. If you gamble that he is and he isn't, you lose nothing, because you've actually lived a very conscious way of life, which is pleasing to everybody. But, if you gamble that he isn't, and he is, you're in big trouble. So now we're going to leave you hanging like that. <coughs> and we're going to ask you all to join us in chanting Hare Krishna. Okay? So, first of all, we'd like to thank everybody for coming and being so patient. Everybody stayed, stay, it's very, very nice. And even put up with this funny accent as well. I'm not sure how much you all understood, but it looks good. So, we thank you all for coming along and we apologize if anything we may say, have said or done has offended you or, or upset you, but it's not our intention to do that. All we want is that you put a, aside a little time in your day and chant Hare Krishna, please. Rama Rama Hari Hari It's because I'm too far down you can't chant but you're not doing it very well. Who told you to put your hands down? That's it. I'm having the rest because I'm getting old. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna 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 Hare Hare
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. <laughs>